we're going to dedicate this video to a man named Juan Bella. Uh, he was born and raised in Valfurias, Texas, my hometown, and lived the rest of his life in Alfred, Texas. He's the man who gave me my very first welding job the Monday after I graduated high school. And he taught me everything I know about how to do stuff like this on drilling rigs. Uh, he was an amazing mentor, a great teacher, and a really good friend. Losing him really does feel like I lost a father and it's, it's gonna be hard without him. So, <clears throat> Before I break down in front of y'all, let's go ahead and get this video started. It's going to be a good one, guys. Just watch. Howdy, hello, and good morning, guys. It's your favorite host from Weld.com, Hunter Wilson, a.k.a. Texas Pipe Hunter 35, coming at you live. Well, we're not live. I'm just trying to hype myself up. It's 3.30 in the morning, guys. We are on our way to a drilling rig. We got to go set a wellhead this morning. These well heads are a lot like the bell nipple that we did, except much bigger, much more important, huge insurance liability, but it's a very high dollar job for us. So we're gonna go through all the ins and outs of it. We're gonna go through all the dirty little secrets parts that no one ever wants to talk about when it comes to well heads and why they're such big boy jobs. Y'all stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Here we got our wellhead. What we need to do first things first is what we call a rough cut to get this conductor pipe out of here. Because what we're gonna be welding to is that pipe you see on the inside of that bigger pipe. That bigger pipe is called your conductor. Then you have your surface casing on the inside there. That's what that wellhead is gonna get welded to. And what they're doing here is they're giving me the measurement of how high they want this wellhead to sit. This particular one is gonna sit two inches above ground level so that way their flow line can run straight to the tanks the way they need it to. Right now we're getting that all figured out. You're gonna notice I got waders on, so you're gonna wanna get yourself some good fishing waders because as you can see down in that cellar, it is not pretty, it is ugly, it is full of water and mud, and that's generally how they're always going to be. They can pump it out sometimes, but not every time. Here we're getting started with our rough cut. It doesn't need to be straight, it doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to come off. Now what you're going to struggle with at first here is that surface casing is full of water from the concrete job. They have to pump concrete down the well so that way nothing comes up, no gas, no nothing. The well's not gonna come alive on us and we're not gonna have a blowout. Cutting this, this surface casing while it's full of water is not fun and it's not exactly easy. So what I'll do is I'll cut as much as I can before it just stops cutting on me because there's water shooting out of it and just let that thing drain. And you can see how that water is coming out of there. That's totally normal, it's gonna happen. The only thing you wanna make sure of while you're doing this is you're not gonna cut below where you need to be so you can get your takeoff right. Because if you have your your wellhead sitting too low or too high from where it's supposed to be, it's gonna throw a lot of things off. It's a problem. Now, if your wellhead is sitting too low, quite honestly, I have no idea how to fix that. The only thing I can think of is they're gonna to need to get a fishing tool called a spear to grab onto the edges of that surface casing and pull it up out of their TD. And that could cause a lot of problems in the well. I mean, personally, I've never had an issue with being off on my measurement. And we're gonna talk about getting that measurement here in a little bit. But you can see I'm fighting this cut, trying to get as much as I possibly can so this can drain as quickly as possible because it's several feet up above my head where it's at and it's eight and five eighths casing. So that's a lot of water that we're trying to move as quickly as possible out of there. So that way we can get this job done. Here, we're stringing out a string line across the top of the cellar. I'm gonna use two welding rods to hold my string line. What we're doing here is we're finding ground level. Now, like I said before, this wellhead needs to sit two inches above ground level. 
So we're going to use this string as our ground level and pull our measurement from our wellhead to make sure that we're going to be sitting right where we need it to be. So now that we got the rough cut done, what we want to do is we want to find our measurements and our takeoffs for this wellhead. Like I said before, they want this thing two inches above ground level. Now that we know where everything needs to sit, we're going to double check everything, measure twice, cut once kind of thing. Right there, I'm finding where my cut's going to be. Now I'm going to pull this string line across again and double check it so that way everything lands right where it needs to be. Everything's on the money. Then I'm going to put my wrap around on it and go ahead and mark where that final cut is going to be. Now this final cut, this is the one that needs to be nice and pristine and clean. Nice and straight. We don't want any crooked cuts, so pay very close attention at this part. This is where it's going to make or break you. And again, you don't want to find out what's going to happen if you mess this up. It's going to be several thousand dollars worth of damage. Now that we got our final cut measurement marked, what we're going to do is we're going to get this water out of this surface casing. Reason being, we don't want that water in there and mess us up while we're cutting or for this water to overflow and mess up our mark and then we lose our spot. Yes, I'm using a kid's squirt toy for the pool. There are other ways you can do this, but this is just what we had at the time and it works. We get that pumped out. We're gonna take a look at everything. I like to mark the inside of this surface casing when I'm doing this so I can watch closely how high that water is gonna rise. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started cutting on it. And this is where you gotta squat down and get in there. It is not clean, it is not pretty. On jobs like this, you don't have any room to complain about, oh, well, it's muddy, it's wet. This is just what we have to deal with from time to time. Being a rig welder is not always clean and glorious like people make it seem. So now we start the prep work. Just like with the bell nipple, this has to be clean on the inside and especially on the outside when you do this bevel, you don't want any sharp edges whatsoever that may cut that rubber seal on the inside that we talked about earlier. Prep work is super important here. This is another thing that'll make or break you when it comes to setting wellheads is prep work. Do not rush the prep work. Now that we know our measurements dead on, we know everything's gonna sit where we want it to, what we need to do now is we need to grease everything. So we're gonna grease the casing right there at that bevel, so that way we're not gonna risk rolling that seal on the inside even though that rubber sometimes still will roll. So you're gonna have to check the inside of this thing after you get it set before you even start your two hole. You can see here, you know, I'm putting that grease on there and I'm putting it on thick. Do keep in mind, you only want to put this up high. You don't want to go any lower than you have to with this grease because it will wind up in your weld and it is not fun to burn through. Be paying attention to what you're doing. Grease the hell out of this. I'm going to climb out here and I'm going to grease the inside. And then right before we set it on there, you're gonna see me grease the inside one more time. And when I stick my hand up under here, what I'm doing is I'm greasing that seal. That rubber is the most important thing right now. This is our big concern, is making sure nothing happens to this rubber. As some of you may know, bad things happen when rubbers break. Here, you can see that we're getting this wellhead set, getting it dropped in where it needs to be. And that valve that that guy is slapping on the other side of me, that valve has to face a certain direction. The company man, the tool pusher, the wellhead technician, hell, even the driller is gonna know which way that valve needs to face and you need to make sure you ask them. With most rigs, they always face the same direction. So for this company, this is rig four, this valve always faces towards their mud tanks. Very rarely do they want it facing somewhere else, but we're gonna get that valve facing towards those mud tanks and then two hole it to our substructure. What I do to two hole this thing is I will line my four foot level up. You can see I'm double checking that seal on the inside. Always double check your seal, triple check your seal, and then check your seal one more time. It is not fun if you have to cut these heads off to reset because that seal didn't go on right. What I do is I just line the edge of my four foot level up with two holes on this flange and I'm two holing to the substructure. As long as this measurement lines up, 
we're good to go. You can see I'm telling these guys like, hey, I need help turning it this way or that way. That's just what you gotta do. Make those measurements line up, make a match, and then you're two hold. Like I said, check that seal one more time. Now, this is an important part here, pay attention. Every single well head has a test plug. You're gonna see here in a second, I'm gonna take that test plug out. The whole plug needs to come out. If you don't take that test plug out, that void in between your rubber seal and where you're welding at, if that void fills with heat and you know all that moisture that's in there, it will crack your well head. Cracking a well head is not a fun experience. It's not a good thing, but do not lose that test plug. Now this plate I'm setting up here, that's just to keep stuff from falling down hole. You always wanna make sure you don't drop stuff down hole. This test plug I'm gonna pull off right now, do not lose it. You know, I take it off and I either put it in my rod bucket or it goes straight into my shirt pocket so I don't lose it. But now that we got everything set, everything's where it needs to be, it's two hold, it's leveled, everything's good to go. With something as thick as this well head is and as heavy as this well head is, you're gonna wanna preheat. Get all that moisture out of there because Everything we're welding on this head is 7018. I've very rarely heard of anyone using anything other than any 18 series rod. We're gonna preheat this thing to 250 degrees and then get started with the welding. So I got everything preheated. First things first, I'm gonna put on some latex gloves. The reason I'm gonna put on latex gloves or rubber gloves is because my gloves are already soaked at this point. And as you know, putting Welding rods and stingers with wet gloves is just asking to get shocked. I'm gonna also put on some other pieces of PPE because I do weld these things hot as sin. Even with the 7018, I am gonna have stuff falling. So I wanna make sure that I'm protecting my arms, you know, protecting everything as much as I can, getting all set up for that before we start the welding. After this first pass of 7018, by this company's procedure, they want all 9018 all the way out. In some cases, they will tell you they want 9018 all the way out. They'll tell you they want flux core all the way out. You're always gonna do it with some kind of low hydrogen rod or wire. And reason being is they don't want that hydrogen cracking because if this well head cracks and the well comes alive or while the well is live and they have a blowout, this well head is the only thing that's stopping everything because all of your control devices are gonna be on top of this wellhead. That's why it's got a flange up there. Your BOP units, your tree, everything is gonna bolt up to this. So this has to be solid. For this first pass, I'm using Atomark's 7018 330 seconds and then 1 8 9018 bowlers. That's just what they want, so that's what I'm doing. Take your time inspect your work as you go if you see anything that don't look right fix it right then and there you know make sure you're taking care of everything you're cleaning everything you're paying attention you're not getting any undercut try to watch that puddle as closely as you can to make sure you're not getting any slag inclusions always look for porosity undercut anything that's not right just like anything else fix it as you go, do not wait to fix it because by then it might be too late. Now we've let the well head cool all the way from however hot it was when I was welding on it to cool to the touch, you can go ahead and put your test plug in and then start your test. The way people do this is you can either test with oil, which is how we're going to do it, hydraulic oil, or you can test with nitrogen. 
they'll tell you we want to pressure up to however much this one was 2,500 pounds. So we're going to pressure up and we're going to hold that pressure for a set amount of time. And they will tell you how long they want that held to. Sometimes you have to test this yourself. Sometimes the wellhead technician will be out there and he'll test it. The fact that we're testing it ourselves, that's an additional charge. That's more money in our pocket. Don't get too upset when you gotta test it yourself. We got everything tested. Now the Roughnecks are gonna bolt up the BOP and the high drill, and that's it for us. We are done. You gotta know how to charge it out right. I get hourly to and from the rig. My normal going rate. Once I start working on that head, now it goes to wellhead rates, which is at $150 an inch. Once I'm done welding before testing, I'm still not on an hourly rate while I'm waiting for it to cool down. Once we test it, whether I test it or the wellhead guy tests it, either I'm charging an additional 400 or I'm just sitting there. Once we get that tested, then I go back on hourly. It gets a little confusing, it's a little complicated. You really gotta pay attention to this stuff. When I do pretty much any pipeline, you're responsible for that weld for 10 years after the completion of the job. If that line blows out and they come back and figure out that it was due to weld failure, then you can be held liable for the damages occurred by that. With a wellhead, if it ever blows out, again, due to weld failure, you're liable for it. On top of that wellhead goes all the well control devices, like the high drill while they're doing the drill process. Then after they're done, the BOP and the tree, all that stuff. Without that well head, they cannot control that weld. You have to be on top of your A-game here. Putting a well head on is not hard. It's the attention to detail. I've never heard of a well blowing out due to weld failure. I'm sure it's happened. Anything can happen. It is a huge insurance liability. The customers that I do well heads for require me to keep a $5 million umbrella coverage which if this thing blows out, it's gonna cost me way more than five million. You just have to understand what it is you're getting yourself into. You know, we talked about how to do it, the attention to detail, how it all works, insurance, what you can expect to make on a job like this. Hopefully one day, I'll see y'all out here. That's all I got for y'all. I'm out of here and I'll see y'all down the line.